Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to spend a few minutes, just one video, on making sure you guys are able to calculate transformer impedance and also transformer fault current. The reason, you know, the important, the transformer percent impedance, guys, is going to be on the transformer nameplate, okay? And uh, so the chances of you ever having to calculate it in real life are very, very slim. There is However, a chance that you might have to uh, calculate it maybe on the CFQ or something like that. And so I'm just going to go over it really quickly. As far as I know, you're also learning this on your in your transformer shop or in transformer class, guys. And so this might be, you, you know, review. And uh, if you look at unit five now, guys, and this is our yet last unit, uh, handout one, there is kind of uh, some notes on calculating transformer percent impedance and also fault current and there's an example there with all the numbers and so I'm going to let you read that I'm not going to read it to you but I do want to go over one example with you really quickly here on how to calculate a transformer's percent impedance and also fault current and the reason why it's important guys basically is because uh, you need to know the um, fault current of a transformer so that you know how to correctly protect it because there's two really things that you're protecting on a transformer one is you know it's maximum current you know so that it isn't uh, being subjected to a current that's exceeds its you know the current that it's designed to operate at and the second is that the overcurrent protection that's protecting the transformer can also handle the maximum current that the transformer will ever see in the event that it gets shorted out. And so the fault current of a transformer, guys, literally is, if it was a dead short, you know, what is the maximum amount of current that it would, would it, it would draw? And then when you choose overcurrent protection for that transformer, you would need to make sure that the overcurrent protection has a maximum interrupt rating that exceeds the maximum fault current that the transformer could see. Because if the transformer under short circuit conditions exceeded the circuit breaker's interrupt rating, you could have a situation where instead of the breaker opening because it's a dead short, it actually welds shut and doesn't open at all, okay? And that will, you know, pretty much guarantee that the transformer is going to burst into flames, um, if not the panel and everything else, okay, guys? So that's why it's important to know how, that you, how to calculate the fault current of a transformer and in order to calculate the fault current, you need the transformer's percent impedance, okay? So the way to determine the fault current, the maximum fault current and the percent impedance for a transformer is done this way. It's really kind of two steps. The first step that we're gonna do is calculating the transformer's percent impedance. If you ever wanted to know it and you didn't you know, feel like looking at the transformer nameplate, okay, is you would have to connect a variac, okay, uh, to uh, the primary, the transformer. A variac is just a variable AC power supply, right guys? And then the second thing you would have to do is basically short out, not basically, you would have to short out the secondary, all right? So you're gonna put a variable transformer on the primary of the transformer, you're gonna make a dead short on the secondary of the transformer here, I show it as an ammeter sitting in there. And an ammeter is a low impedance device, right? An ammeter basically has no impedance. And so you could literally connect an ammeter to it. And uh, that would work. You could also short it out with a wire and hang an ammeter on it, right? If you had a clamp on ammeter. So that's it. And then what you would do is you would start cranking up the voltage on the variac while watching the current on the uh, secondary and you would increase the voltage on the variac until the transformer was running at its maximum current. And so we'd have to first know the maximum current for this particular transformer. So um, let's calculate that. I secondary, the max secondary current guys is going to be the VA of the transformer over the voltage, right? And we're working on the secondary here. This particular guy is 10,000. VA, let's say, okay, 10 kVA. And so it would be the 10 kVA over the 240 volts. That is the secondary, and we're going to calculate it really quickly here. 10,000 divided by 240 
Looks like this transformer is good for 41.67 amps when it's under full load. Okay, guys? And so we would crank up this Variac slowly while watching the ammeter. When the ammeter said 41.7 you know, amps, we would record the voltage on the primary. And so the primary voltage, let's say, primary voltage at full load, let's say on this particular one is 19 volts. Okay, so we crank that up and we'd notice that it took 19 volts on the primary to get 41.67 amps on the secondary and by the way you will not damage this transformer by doing this okay even with a shorted secondary you're not going to damage anything you're going to be running this thing at maximum current but that's not a big deal it's not going to uh, damage it at all okay so you and you're going to just do it for a short time anyway right guys so after you've done that guys you can now have enough information to calculate the transformers percent impedance because the percent impedance guys if you look whoops percent z if you look at your notes is the measured voltage over the rated voltage of the primary Okay, guys, and so it would be the 19 volts that it took to get this thing to run at full current under short circuit conditions divided by the rated primary voltage, and uh, it comes to uh, 0 0.031, you know, 6, 7, um, and we would multiply that by 100, and we would get 3.167 percent. Okay, so the percent impedance for this particular transformer is 3.167%. Okay? Now, that calculates the percent impedance. You know, the next thing I want to cal calculating is the fault current. And in order to calculate the fault current, guys, I fault is going to be equal to the maximum current I secondary over percent Z. Okay, guys? And I secondary is the secondary current, so it's going to be 41.67. Percent Z, we're going to put it in there as that number right there. And that should calculate the maximum current that this thing ever will see under any conditions. 61, oops, 41.67 divided by 0.031. Six seven, and this particular transformer, if I shorted it out, is going to, you know, cause thirteen hundred and sixteen amps to flow. Okay, guys, and so you will want to make sure your overcurrent protection is capable of interrupting thirteen hundred and sixteen amps. All right, guys. So that's how percent impedance is calculated. Watch the video again if uh, I went too fast, okay? And you won't hear me talk about percent impedance again. That's just a little heads up for you so that you can get that question correct on the CFQ, okay? Because the CFQ loves these kinds of questions, okay? Questions that you'll never encounter in real life. Come back for the next video. We're going to start a section on AC alternators and motors.